a little drawing video here. We were talking about uh, mug handles and trying to bite off in my in hindsight a little too much. Um, if you recall, we were sort of talking about creating a box and then finding several points of various arcs. And that's that gets uh, confusing pretty quickly. So I do want to, um, I'm going to go back and um, talk about sort of a, a simpler way to, smaller bite version of, of some really important skills anyways. So that will just sort of help overall. And in hindsight, I would have made all this um, stuff on the on the pa same page as I'm drawing. I'm not sure if that is something that will come off or not. But what we're going to talk about is is the notion of creating a a form, three dimensional structure, starting from some kind of a box. But we are. I am going to simplify the kind of um, structure we are going to create from that box. And it's a, it's a great skill to have to start learning how to make a box and, and chop things off like it, um, like it was woodworking class or adding things like, like it was woodworking class. <laughs> um, but that is the idea we're going and I'm going to start off with a, a simp, sort of a simplified version to try to get to get the concept in our brain of a uh, triangular prism whatever you call it which is sort of great for roofs and stuff like that and then we're going to sort of round things out a little bit and and, and think of it still as sort of kind of an arch but that curved sort of semi, semi-circle cylinder, semi-cylinder. And then we're going to sort of flip it on its side to try to, to really hone in on the, uh, the outer structure of, of anything like this mug handle. And it will come in handy a lot more often than you think. And the ideas, the foundational ideas, are, are, are just important to anything, anything in drawing. Important to anything. That was a bit of a hyperbole. But so we're going to, I'm, I'm going to talk about these three guys. We're going to bite off some smaller chunks here. So the first one, which is, um, sometimes described as a uh, triangular prism, a triangle with depth or extruded. There's a variety of ways of describing it. But we are going to start with, like I've been talking about, a box. So I'm just sketching in the basics of some imaginary box in my head. I have my teams of lines, edges that initially I'm going to try to make parallel and then slightly curving in, not curving, angling into the to the main center three. This is my home base, my anchor. I have videos on that if you want to touch up on that you can go look for those. So there's a box. It's good enough for now. And one thing I want to um, do when I'm starting to um, chip away, chop away, carve away, cut away, 
is find the center of this larger face for this particular prism. And as we've been talking about with the, uh, you know, making tic-tac-toes and, and crisscrossing lines to find that center point. Same idea works with um, rectangles in perspective which is a really, really helpful thing. Thanks to the perspective gods for inventing that. <laughs> um, it gets a little bit interesting when we're doing um, things in, in perspective because this center line, well, where it is gonna go, it will go through this point where the crisscrosses meet where the diagonals meet. It's all, it also needs to follow the same logic as the vertical lines. And that the closer it gets to this main one, the more parallel it is. And the further away it gets, the more it will sort of angle, angle in so that down, down there somewhere, they'll eventually appear to conver converge. It's a big term for me right now for some reason. Um, so I am starting and making sure that this line this midline is at least parallel with this and if anything slightly angled similar to this one. It's tricky. It's harder than it looks. Um, that's a favorite phrase of mine. And then once I do that, I'm going to follow this, this line up and I know that at this, at this point where it's in the middle at the top, I know that that point is also going to be the middle of a line that would start, the, it would split this top face in half. Once again, want to be really careful about the angle of that needs to follow that same logic we've been talking about. Are you parallel? Pretty close. So at this point I have, I know this top, the center part, and that is going to help me chop off a piece of this box by connecting the lines I just connected. And that's going to be one side of this triangular prism. So I found the center. Very important. The more you do this, the more you won't even have to think about it. Follow that around over the top and then I'm imagining I'm going to cut away this shape right here, this chunk. So I will cut that away presently. There will be thinking but um, do it slow and don't hurt yourself. <laughs> um, and in a similar fashion, I'm gonna chop off this block. 
wedge be a good word for that so now that I don't need my guidelines anymore I'll erase and clean up and then that gives me a sporting chance for figuring out how that sort of structure should react in perspective with lines converging to appropriate places, etc. And next, I'm going to do a similar thing, but I'm going to start rounding the cutting away. So I'm going to create a similar box. This video may be getting too long, we'll see. I think I'm supposed to do these and play them back at high speed. Real time, I think, is something dorky old guys do like me. So there is here's here's a, a new box that I'm creating. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Uh, uh, mm. Let me see, that one was a little off. <laughs> Apparently they make sounds. So there's an initial box that's, uh, that's perfect. No, um, it's decent. Good enough to get me started. So I'm going to do, do the same thing. I could certainly create a triangular prism again, but I'm going to um, I'm going to use the same idea to find where the perspective mid point across there is. And I know it's going to be something like that, but until you've done this a bunch of times, it's hard to even even when you have done it a bunch of times, it can be hard to gauge that. So that's my little crisscross. That's the points where that's the point where they cross. Remember when I'm creating this center I don't, what can you call it a stripe? I don't know. I think of taping. It's following the, the, the logic of all the up all the vertical lines. Not, not quite as angled as this one, which is not very angled at, at all, but slightly, slightly tilted. I'm looking at it and something seems off just in general. So I'll keep chipping away here. So that's where my center point is. I was pretty close, but not quite. So if I keep like wrapping that tape around the box, I want to make sure um, that this one goes with the same logic as, as these guys. Should be maybe a little bit more really helps to start um, knowing how to use your your pencil because your eyes will start telling you something that's not quite accurate So that's good enough for demonstration purposes. So, um, so this is where we were with the triangle, and at that point, I just chopped off, lopped off that whole part. But for arcs and curves, it's a little bit more uh, challenging 
especially when it's in perspective like this. I usually try to um, get an idea for this first arc and it's going to be, I know that I want it to be following through this point right here. Because it's in perspective, it's it's more it's a little bit more complicated than just making a simple letter C. It's actually going to kind of keep heading up at, even after it passes through that point because there's a little more space over there. I usually try to find these kind of two thirds, three quarters points to, to at least help me. And then by the time it reaches here, it's got to be going straight up and down. So this is, like I said, not the simplest thing. You will notice that technically it's um, it's part of an ellipse. I think I just may have gotten myself in trouble right there, but. Um, But see if you can uh, see if you can have it uh, have a go at that, I should say. And then from here, I'm going to start over here at this point, like I did here when I was just chopping these off. But instead of chopping straight, I'm going to try to follow this curve, this arc, going straight there. And something about something about at least getting this portion accurate really helps helps me helps my brain kind of go oh okay yeah sure that seems like half of an arch I'd buy that um, unfortunately we're not done yet so that's um, that is going to keep coming down the same as this, that imaginary edge, but at some point we're not going to be able to see the opposite side of it. And it's pretty close to, um, this is, I think, like I've been trying to explain, sort of thinking like how I'm connecting a cylinder when I have two ellipses and I'm connecting the side. Kind of messy, but um, I'm going to go with that for now. And the reason I'm even talking about this is because that that is the foundational three-dimensional structure for... There, I'm going to chop away these guys like I was talking about. Seems more sanding than chopping. <laughs> yeah, router. Routering, that's what it is. But that's the idea for that one. And as you could maybe can see that really this is the, uh, the foundational outer structure that we'd be creating a, a anything that's uh, like a mug handle um, but in this case I'm gonna um, rotate it and so it's straight up and down more like an actual mug would be let me see I'm gonna do it um, a little bit further over here Yeah. 
Once again, starting with my box. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good enough. I'm gonna uh, imagine sort of a, a nice thick classic diner coffee mug handle. So it's gonna be arcing around like this. So I'm gonna use employ the same finding the perspective middle. It's the actual middle, I should say. Eh. I'm not going to get into that. This point right here where the crisscrosses meet. And I'm going to this time create this line that's going to work in the same logic as the other ones going in this direction. And when I say same logic, it needs to be because it's on this this team of the left and away team. It's got to be at least parallel with this one and slightly angled towards it. It does need to go through there. So the, the midpoint too, so it gets a little bit confusing. Anyways, from there, I'm gonna find that's that piece of tape, whatever you want to call it, and then I'm gonna um, remember I sort of gave myself a little bit of help with trying to at least imagine where the two-thirds mark would sort of be to help me start getting a sense what this what this structure would look like in perspective Lean back and see if that really makes sense or not. I think it's close. Partly because it's so many options in that line. Um, but like we did over here, now I'm going to... I know that I need to get from this point to this point. And it's looking like it's something is awry. What is it? I think I just have you. That's where that point is. Being a little bit too, not too loose with my sketches, but I am, I am sketched guidelines, but it is, I am at a point now where I'm wanting to tighten them up. Whereas before I just had them finger tight still kind of finger tight but um, that's metaphorical and once again I can sort of imagining this half helps me sort of gauge that yeah I'm on the right track here So, connecting those is like connecting a cylinder is going to be pretty close to 
the same angle as that one. 